I go back to this all the time. Honeybees kill more than 200 people a year in the U.S. alone, more than international terrorism combined. But we're not seeing Homeland Security checkpoints out on the road to stop honeybees because it's something that we know is just a risk in the environment inherently, just like earthquakes, just like tsunamis. What do you do to mitigate against earthquakes and tsunamis? You don't live in those zones or you live in a home that is designed to mitigate the danger from living in those zones. The truth is the greatest danger historically is government. In the 20th century, according to the University of Hawaii, 262 million innocents, non-military personnel, were killed by government, were executed, were murdered, in many cases raped and tortured before they were killed. Statistically, it's not earthquakes, it's not asteroids, it's not flesh-eating bacteria, it's not cigarettes, it's not firearms, it's not honeybees, it's not great white sharks that are the danger. They kill five people a year, but everybody's scared of them. No, ladies and gentlemen, it's government taken over by out-of-control criminal interest. And when governments start trying to say, we're not going to let you be pro-Second Amendment, or we're not going to let you promote your views on climate and the fact that the earth is always going through changes. We're going to shut you up. We're not going to let television have you on as guests. That's what they're proposing. You know you're dealing with the real threat that has reared its head throughout history. It's called despotism. It's called oppression. It's called tyranny. And across the world, it's on the march. But for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, to quote Sir Isaac Newton. And there is a response, a sleeping giant of free humanity that is awakening and beginning to move against the tyranny. The future, the destiny of civilization and freedom is in your hands. Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com. Now back to David Knight and the worldwide radio transmission on this Friday edition. We'll be back this Sunday live as well with more live reports and special commentary. That's exactly right. As Alex was pointing out, they're going to try to censor people that they don't agree with. But we also see that they do other things. They also create fake social media outlets. There was a stir this week as we learned that the U.S. government was creating a fake Cuban Twitter account. We have a report from Leanne McAdoo that aired on the nightly news last night. But remember that they have two ways that they do this. We just saw in Turkey how they would shut down Twitter, how they would shut down YouTube because there was a video on YouTube about a false flag attack being planned by the highest levels of the Turkish civilian government, uh, the government there, as well as the intelligence com uh, commission and the military. They were all planning to do a false flag so they could start a war with Syria. So what they do? They shut down YouTube to the entire country. But they can also do the opposite. They can also, as we've seen many times in the past with Voice of America, Radio Free Europe, and now with the Cuban Twitter account, they can use information in their PSYOP war. Here's that report from Leanne McAdoo from the Nightly News last night. The U.S. government created a secret social media platform aimed at taking down Cuba's communist government. With the recent introduction of cell phone use in Cuba, U.S. officials saw the perfect opportunity to reach hundreds of thousands on the island. The plan was to launch a Cuban Twitter using cell phone text messaging to evade Cuba's strict control of information and internet regulation. Initially, users would receive non-controversial content like news messages on soccer games or music and hurricane updates. Later, when the network reached a critical mass of subscribers, operators would introduce political content aimed at inspiring Cubans to organize smart mobs, mass gatherings called at a moment's notice that might trigger a Cuban spring. This was incredibly dangerous for the some 40,000 young Cubans who were interacting with the platform. They had no idea that the messages they thought were uninfluenced by their government were in fact financed by the U.S. government and influenced by its agenda. Social media platforms like Twitter have aided uprisings in several countries, and in 2011, Hillary Clinton admitted the U.S. helped people in oppressive Internet environments get around filters. There's no telling how many of these uprisings have been financed and influenced by the U.S. government. 
But while the U.S. government admits that social media is a powerful tool in taking down regimes overseas, it wouldn't like to see technology having that same effect here in America. That's why every year we're seeing legislation like SOPA, CISPA, and PIPA, as well as the executive order signed by Obama that gives him the authority to shut down the Internet. Instruments to fight the enemy abroad are now being used as tools of tyranny here in America. Tanks used for war are now being brought to our streets. Urban warfare training has increased at home, and we are being openly propagandized to thanks to last year's reform of the Smith Month Act. The lifting of the propaganda ban will now allow a vast ocean of programming by Voice of America, Radio Free Europe, and other media, which is now heard in over a hundred countries, to be heard here at home as well. Talk radio is and was the original alternative media. When print was controlled, when the TV was controlled, only three channels, it was talk radio where people could call in and talk about things and so many stories would break regionally that would end up becoming you know, very important. And it was the place that could change what was happening legislatively. Government, tyrants in government have always feared talk radio. And they're doing everything they can to kill it now. And in response to a government losing the info war, NSA champion Mike Rogers will be coming to a radio station near you. We're going to be right back with the White House defending that practice. That's the update from today. That was last night's. A lot of people's lives and bodies are out of balance. AlkaVision Plasma pH drops optimize pH level and get rid of harmful waste and acid. Just a few drops in water restores vibrance and energy and gets you back in balance. Now order two bottles and get $10 off your order. Sign up for monthly auto shipping and save 25%. Call 800-518-7615 or visit ALKAVision.com. Alkalize your body, supercharge your health at AlkaVision.com. We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit and carding to a private bank, having it led back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. This is Steve Shank. The St. Patrick's Day earthquake could be the forerunner to the big one. Still got fires in the west, still got winter in the east. Now the flooding has started in the Midwest with a vengeance. Millions of you have heard me tell you that every expert survivalist knows preparation is his most important skill. When you're surprised by a storm, a quake, a flood, it's too late. What you've got is all you're going to get, and it's usually not enough for 93% of Americans. Here's some help. Please go to fearlessusa.com and download my free emergency survival guide. With each emergency checklist, you'll see the problems you may never have imagined and the solution. Go to fearlessusa.com on the web or call 855-918-3663 for Steve Shank's free emergency survival guide. This is good stuff you absolutely need to know. Go to fearlessusa.com on the web or call 855-918-3663 for your free emergency survival guide. The globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. For a limited time, we are offering 15% off Super Male Vitality at InfoWarsLife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality. InfoWarsLife.com He's the T-Rex of political talk. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. Now, in that last segment, you heard Leanne McAdoo's special report about the fake Cuban Twitter account that was set up by the American government. Today, we have a reaction to that. But before I go to that, let me, let me point out that 
if you're a Prison Planet TV member, that not only helps to support our operation, helps to pay salaries for people like Leanne, myself, Jakari, and others, all the support staff. It also is a way that you can help wake people up, friends and family. You can share that with up to 10 other people can watch at the same time. And of course, at Prison Planet TV, all of Alex Jones's excellent documentaries are there. Another great way to wake people up. But we condensed the news down into a very fast-paced 30-minute program with special reports and updates. And, of course, yesterday, the thing that was breaking that Leanne reported on was this fake Cuban Twitter account. It's one of the articles that we covered last night. A fake PSYOP operation against the government of Cuba. But it gives us insight into what the American government is doing. And as, as Leanne pointed out, the instruments of uh, fighting your enemies abroad tend to come back and be used against you as instruments of tyranny at home. And of course, we are seeing that in spades now, especially in the PSYOP war, in the information war. But listen to this reaction from the White House trying to defend this. First of all, the reaction of a couple of senior Democrats in the Congressional Intelligence and Judiciary Committees, they said they had known nothing about the effort. I know nothing. I'm not involved with that. Distanced themselves from it. And they described it as dumb, dumb, dumb. Yeah, it was dumb. But because it got exposed, okay? This is one of the things that was in a memo that got uncovered. This was a memo from Mobile Accord Incorporated, one of the project's creators. And they said, there will be absolutely no mention of the United States government's involvement and this is absolutely crucial for the long-term success of the service and to ensure the success of the mission. So it was a covert PSYOP mission to get people roped into a social media network and then use that social media network to try to change public opinion. Where have we heard that before? Hmm. Would that be like Facebook <laughs> or Google or so many other outlets on the Internet? The Internet, I think, was initially designed by that, by the same people we've been talking about, creating a biotech transhuman future soldier, DARPA. You know, they started the Internet. But we can take those weapons and use them against them. This is um, one of the things that, that came up in this, was they were talking to, uh, they have USAID's top official, Rajiv Shah, is scheduled to testify on Tuesday before the Senate Appropriations Committee. Now, where have you heard USAID before? Well, that's the corporation that is often the front group for the CIA. That's the corporation that Obama's mother worked for, if you remember. That's what she was doing when they were out of the country, where he grew up out of the country. Um, a very disturbing thing to see here. But again, it's more of the same as we see. And of course, they're saying that the Republican chairman of the House Oversight Committee said he too would like to look into the program. Come on, don't tell me that Mike Rogers didn't know all about this. He's just not going to dump on these people because he is such a quizzling for the security state. And it's another reason why I think he's moving to talk radio is because I don't think he could get elected dog catcher. I think we could get people on the left and the right to chip together to keep Mike Rogers out if he had decided to run. But he is heading for the hills because they don't want to wind up with egg on their face. And talking about bridging the differences between the left and the right. Here we see something from the ACLU.org. Have we become a surveillance state? A five-part test. And here's the five questions they have. Capacity. To what extent have we reached the point where we're technologically capable of building a total surveillance state? Number two, infrastructure. To what extent have we created an infrastructure for the mass surveillance state? We're out of time, but I tell you what, the answer to that is yes, we do have a police state. We had William Benny, one of the top whistleblowers ever from the NSA. He had technical responsibilities that were global, and he said we have arrived at the police state. Well, that's it for today. We're going to be back on Sunday at 4 p.m. Central. 5 p.m. Eastern. Join us then. You are listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today.